Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. Originally, Superman the movie had a different director than Dick Donner attached and about four or five writers, including legend Mario Puso, who wrote The Godfather. So, you know, an illustrious name to write an illustrious character. Once the original director left, um, you know, Dick Donner came on board. He brought on his good friend, Tom Mankiewicz. Superman the movie is the way it is because of Tom Mankiewicz. Tom Mankiewicz was a genius of a writer and a great script doctor as well. So Superman the movie was the first movie I ever saw. I've told you that repeatedly. I loved it as a kid, as someone in their teens, 20s, and I love it today as someone who's only been 50 for a couple of weeks. But there's one issue I have with the movie. You are forbidden to interfere in human history, Jor-El tells uh, Clark Cow, aka Superman, as Lois Lane dies. And in the, uh, in the anguish that Superman feels at the time, he flies to the, the skies and he can hear his father's words. You are forbidden to interfere in human history. Now Jor-El is saying this for a reason. Because he's investigated what powers a Kryptonian would have on Earth. It's clear he knows what his son would be capable of on Earth. He wants his son to be an inspiration. He wants, he wants his son to be a hero who rescues and saves people in the present day. What he doesn't want him to do is go back in time and change human history and human destiny. But at that moment, Lois Lane dies you know, Superman is in love with Lois Lane. He can't handle it. So in an emotional climax, he turns the Earth on its axis. And he turns time backwards. Now, none of this makes sense. The only thing that works for me is the emotional climax. It works emotionally. There's no question about that. That moment is so emotional and powerful because it says something about Superman's character. And you should read his character in the comics because... This is true of Superman. He can't accept the loss of one human life. And this is why it kind of works. But as a concept, Superman turning the Earth on his axis, first of all, scientifically, makes no sense. Not that it has to, because it's fiction. It's fantasy. You can, and I did suspend disbelief as a kid, an adult, and now as an adult as well. But so it doesn't work scientifically. It doesn't really work at all because as he turns time back, he's actually undoing everything he's done. You know, you know, saving people from the earthquake, throwing the rocks down, stopping the flood. Everything he does, everyone he saves, he's undoing it. So he's turned time backwards. So Lois Lane is alive. But surely, shouldn't he have to go back and rescue people again? Maybe rescue Lois first, make, fly her off somewhere so she's safe, and then rescue all the other people and do all the good things he's already done. Surely, we should have seen that. So it doesn't make sense. But one of the worst things about this is, is, you know, there's no consequences for Superman here. And, you know, Jor-El wants him, you know, to earn his place on the earth, he cheats. He undoes something by going back in time. And as I say, Tom didn't really look at this too deeply. Now let me give you the backstory of this concept. Originally, Superman turns the earth back on its axis at the end of Superman 2. At the end of Superman the movie originally, uh, Superman throws one of the missiles into space, as he does in the movie, but originally in a post credit scene or in the ending of the movie, the missile explodes in space and releases Zod, Ursa and Non, who are trapped in the Phantom Zone. So, and basically Zod basically flies out and screams, FREE! And it's a dramatic ending, to be continued, Superman 2, coming soon. Awesome ending. So you can see where Kevin Feige, and, you know, Kevin Feige got his ideas from for the MCU, because basically Kevin Feige and Jeff Johns got into the industry Thanks to Dick Donner. He literally, they literally learned everything they knew from Dick Donner. And so, basically, um, what happened with Superman the movie and Superman 2, they were making it back to back, which I think you get yourself in a terrible muddle doing that, but that's what they were doing. 
But because they were taking so long, because the technology was groundbreaking, it took nearly three years to make Superman the movie. The studio said, stop making Superman 2, focus on Superman the movie. And, you know, that ending, that ending at the end of Superman 2, when Superman turns the world on its axis, it's such a compelling ending, put it on Superman the movie. So I actually think the better ending was Zod and the villains escaping and Zod screaming free, but never mind, never mind. So they decided to do that. But there's no consequences for Superman, right? Now, obviously, when Superman the movie was made, this was way beyond Jeff Johns before Jeff Johns Flashpoint. But there, there is a Flashpoint scenario to be had here. You know, by turning the world back on its axis, surely things change. He has changed things. He has broken something, right? And there should be some kind of storytelling narrative to show us the consequences of Superman cheating his way to saving a life. Now, I don't, I'm not deeply against what Tom Mankiewicz did here. I think, as I say, as an emotional climax, it works. And when he saves her, they have this big emotional kind of lovey-dovey moment before Jimmy Olsen rudely interrupts them. So I'm not saying, oh, I wish that wasn't there, or, I, oh my God, I hate Tom Mankiewicz. I couldn't respect the late, great Tom Mankiewicz more than I do right now. This is not a complaint. This is just looking back at something and, and saying, you know what? Actually, this doesn't really work in terms of real world science or even within the storytelling narrative. And because, and this is the thing, because they create this moment where she dies, which is like really compelling as a kid, you think, Shit, Lois Lane is dead. And I mean, there's another question here, really. Maybe she should have stayed dead. Now, again, this would have been a Man of Steel, like, neck-breaking, controversial moment that ultimately probably would have hurt the film, so you don't really do it. But I think if you're looking at it logically, right, this could have been great because basically she could have died and then they could have used Lana Lang, you know, as the future love interest of Clark. You know, he knows her at Smallville, like she does in Superman 3, she could end up working at the planet and they could have done something there. Obviously, it wouldn't have been a good idea, but I think once you kill her, she's got to stay dead. And I think that's the problem because it is ridiculous. And as I say, there's no consequences. Superman 2 could have been a great movie in terms of facing the consequences of Superman turning the world on its axis. Now that is a Superman 2 I would have loved to have seen. Now, I love Superman 2 because it pretty much has the first superhero, supervillains like, like fight fest I ever saw. And it's amazing. And even with all the CGI today, I don't think many films, superhero movies, built what happens in Superman 2 in its third act. But, as I say, if you're going to do that, if you're going to have him turn the world on, his act, on its axis and cheat his way to saving the woman that he loves... I think there has to be consequences for Superman because what's the point of having Jor-El say you are forbidden to interfere with human history if it has no consequences, right? Jor-El isn't just saying this to be mean. He's not saying this because he doesn't want Superman to save people. He is an intelligent scientist on Krypton. Kryptonians are far advanced to humans, right? And light years ahead of them in terms of science, even though, you know, they're as dumb as us, which they pretty much thought their, their, their planet was unsinkable and indestructible, like we do right now. And that's another conversation for another time, by the way. So Jor-El is saying, you know, do not interfere with human history for a reason. He isn't doing it because it's part of his religion. He knows the consequences of Superman turning the world on its axis. And there's no consequences, right? But none of, it, it, does, it doesn't work at all. The concept's bad, but the emotional element kind of covers up. It garnishes the badness of it and how really it just doesn't work at all. But if you're going to do it, you've got to have consequences. You've got to have a flashpoint situation. Something should happen because of what he does. But um, if you're asking me, would I go back and take it out of the movie? No, it absolutely works. And Kidda and Reeve absolutely kill that little scene afterwards and it's iconic and I still love Superman the movie I just think the idea and the concept is a little bit silly and I think if it was done today it would be torn apart and this is why I keep on saying 
As much as I want Superman to be joyful, I don't want anyone with this new Superman movie going back to remake Superman the movie. Unfortunately, right, you know, times change. You've got that movie, you can watch it whenever you want. What we need today is a Superman movie for this generation. That means he can be joyful. He can be bright. The palette, the color palette can be bright. It can be inspirational, but ultimately, it has to be a film that works for today. This has been Movies TV Mad. I met your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wife. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. How dare you say that? And until I see you again, goodbye. Au revoir. Au revoir.